There are a lot of misconceptions around medieval weaponry and what was actually used because a lot of films always portray a sword as the main weapon that was always ever used, which is not obviously the case, but I'll give you a little demonstration of what was sort of used. So, a typical sword, this is sort of an example of an arming sword, but there's lots of variations of swords. Uh, swords were mostly, unlike that's displayed in films and games, swords were mostly used by upper class soldiers because in medieval periods a sword would cost a lot to produce because it's nearly all metal. Now spears were much cheaper and were much more common but I'll come on to that in a minute. Now the sword required a lot more skill to use than many other weapons and it wasn't an efficient weapon because firstly it cost a lot to produce because of its metal construction. Secondly you had to train soldiers to use it which is not something you want to do for a sort of big army. You want something which has the least amount of training time possible. And thirdly, they're not all that good as a general purpose weapon. Swords are almost a status symbol weapon, not an actual um, effective weapon. Obviously you can thrust a lot of force with a sword, and I've got limited space here, but you can swing a sword with a lot of force. But against plate armour, a sword is almost useless. You'd have more effect pommeling with these than you would actually swinging the sword. However, the sword is still actually a very nice weapon, but it's mostly good against unarmoured or very lightly armoured targets, not against heavy targets. So, the sword in that sense wasn't very useful at all. So, unlike the media conception, every soldier didn't use a sword. Another con misconception of the sword is in a lot of films, TV shows like Game of Thrones and everything, swords are always meant to be really sharp, where you know, somebody runs their hand along the blade and they cut themselves open. It was very rare a sword would actually be ground to that sharpness because what that meant was that um, you hit one or two armoured targets with it and you blunted the blade. Swords normally had a very dull blade. It would be sharp enough that once when swung with force against a target you could cut them, but it wouldn't be so sharp that it would, you know, just cut your hand if you ran your finger across it because that wasn't an optimum sharpness. Now. What was much more common for a regular infantryman to have was an axe. Why is an axe better than a sword? Well, the wood's much cheaper for the handle. All you've got that's metal here is the actual blade itself, and the axe head essentially, which is a lot less metal construction than you can imagine on a sword. So for the price of sort of one sword, you could probably make five axe heads. And it was much simpler for a peasant or whatever to use an axe head because an axe, using an axe is sort of an innate you know, uh, thing. You use axe, use a, use a wood's axe to sort of chop trees, chop logs. So adopting it as a military weapon is a much sort of smarter idea because people don't need as much training with them because they already know how to swing an axe. It's much more straightforward than the sword. Obviously, you can do that, and that would go through armor much better as well than the sword because using an axe. You've got much much more weight on the smaller point, meaning it's more effective against armor. It's, very, it's a lot easier to sharpen an axe because of how an axe head it works and obviously overall it's a better weapon. Not saying it's better in every way than a sword but it's for uh, in terms of arming an army an axe is a much better choice as demonstrated. You can you know swing it quite easily not much training require, required and you can do a lot of damage with it. So as said, axes were actually a much better choice if you were filling up an army than a sword was. But we have other things as well. Now, here's a flail. Flails were uh, normally adopted from agricultural flails with a sort of a combat head put on them. Uh, flail and the mace is an interesting choice. Basically, a regular mace would just be a wooden or metal handle with the mace head at the top, which is normally a morning star head like this, or a flanged head where you'd swing it against heavy armour and the crushing force of it would go through the armour. A flail uses a chain so it has more momentum and then the strike ball essentially strikes the target and you'd strike with it and that would dent the armour, perhaps go through the armour. Flails aren't very good against unarmoured targets, obviously you wouldn't want to be hit by one but the flail's main force is its crushing power. When I've tested these against fruit, you'll find that it doesn't do much damage other than puncturing holes in it with that. If it was a person, it would obviously cause concussion, broken ribs and everything. 
and the sort of gouge wound, but it's mostly designed you hit somebody in the head with it who are wearing a helmet, it would crush into their head. Uh, very simple weapon, even cheaper to produce than the axes, less metal on a flail. You don't need as high a quality uh, metal because you don't need to have the sharp, it's mostly the weight behind it. So, you've got a sort of, you've got um, a good weapon against the armoured and medium armoured things and a good weapon for heavy armour. However, what was the most practical weapon of all was a spear or a pole arm. Now, this obviously isn't a pole arm, it's just a broom handle, but it will demonstrate the point. The spear, the spears have been used throughout human history. Essentially, you get a shaft and you put a uh, metal spearhead on it. And with a spear, you can thrust. And it's very easy to learn how to thrust a spear effectively. You can basically do that. And with a head on it, like that would be enough force to go into somebody and kill them. And because the spear had a point on it, and you have a lot of thrust, it has good piercing effects against armour. But what they did later on was they had pole arms, which is where you'd get the same sort of spear shaft, and on the top you'd put normally an axe type head with a spike. So you've got the best of both worlds, you've got the axe's ability to sort of swing, so if you imagine an axe head on the mount, top of here, you'd be swinging it like an axe, it has a lot of cleaving force, the long handle gives you more of a swing, so you know, you can swing, and you can be doing it from behind a shield wall or something as well, you can be swinging this over the top, so it was better as a defensive weapon. And of course, you've got the point on the top so you can still be using it like a spear. You can thrust with it. So you've got an incredibly good weapon. It does both roles. So the majority of soldiers in medieval conflicts would have just been using pole arms because the pole arm was incredibly simple. You have lines of infantry with the pole arms out and it's very hard for something to get through. The event of a cavalry charge, you can crouch using it and that will basically form almost a spear wall and you can also have archers behind your men at arms with the pole arms or spears who are providing your sort of fire support. So ultimately the pole arm was the best and most widespread weapon of medieval history. However, for some reason we've got the misconception probably you know over Hollywood obsession with knights where every single medieval soldier is always using a sword which wouldn't have been the case at all. Swords were of course used, and they've always been a popular weapon throughout history, but they were nowhere near as widespread as, you know, they are made out to be. Swords definitely not a bad weapon, and you have interesting other swords like falchions, which are designed to work a bit more like an axe and a sword, simpler to train a soldier for, shorter blade, use it like a machete, you cleave with it, you don't stab. But overall swords aren't bad weapons of course, but they weren't the widespread weapons. Well, thanks for watching.